So this is the first time you've done a unit translation. Um, the unit translations are a little bit longer. They're usually stories. They tend to come from actual Latin writings. They'll be simplified for you as far as vocabulary and as far as grammar. But it's the, the idea of doing a unit translation is to be able to not just translate word by word, but whole sentences. Can you get whole sentences to make sense? So as a result, labeling should be there to help you translate. You don't have to. I want you to get the general idea of the story. Um, you can do things, translate in separate orders perhaps, but as long as you're not changing the meaning of the sentence. So I'm going to go through a walkthrough and show you how to do this, how to translate line by line. Maybe give you some little help if you're stuck. One thing to notice is that if you, you can, you can translate it on the sheet, you can translate it on a piece of paper, um, have your book open as your book will have some extra vocabulary words right after the trap, the, the unit translation. If you see anything that I've written down that is in italics is in your glossary. Also anything that's bolded as it is right down here, that'll be straight translated. That will be straight translated for you as well. Uh, when we get there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to translate it, show you how I would do it, um, do some of the labeling, not all of it, just anything that would be helpful um, and write it down for you. So you can either do this as you go along and pause the video, you can do it afterwards, but um, this is just meant to be a help, not, not a cheat, but a help. All right, Rhea Silvia she is nominative singular. So that is her name in English. Know that names are declined in Latin, but when we take them into English, we just use one form. So Rhea Silvia, and then est, est is is, we know that already. We just learned that even though we haven't learned all. So Rhea Silvia, I spell her name right, is and we know that philia is daughter and so the is works like an equal sign if you remember so we're looking for another nominative form philia so rea sylvia is the daughter and then regis we see in your glossary it's just translated of a king so quoque means also so do we have there's another est in here so est is probably talking about her as well because it's an also we have ankila so just we have just one nominative so our second nominative must be she because we need two she is and then ankila and then we have also she is also a maid servant And then this is dative, which you just learn right here. It can't be nominative because our verb is singular, so it has to be, it, it can't be nominative, so it's the dative. So to the goddess, because Dea is goddess, Vesta. So if you remember from the, the little YouTube video, she was a she was a maidservant. She was basically a priestess. She was a, called a vestal virgin, so she was never going to be allowed to marry, and then therefore she could never have children that would vie for the throne. Okay, so Mars is Mars, exactly as it is in English. Mars, and then what does he do? Visitat, which if you look in the glossary that they provide right up with this reasoning, we said Mars visits... Now we have the accusative ending. So who does he visit? He visits, Mars visits, Rhea Sylvia. So we stop when we get to the comma, and then we just do that in front. So Mars visits Rhea Sylvia, and et means and. Mox is a adverb that means soon. It can go anywhere that makes sense. So we'll just put it right here. Soon, okay, again, got to spell in English. So here we have femina, and femina is in the nominative form. Soon, the woman. Ah, here we go. This is in your, this is in your glossary. It means... 
gives birth to, and pueros is the accusative form of boys. So, and is also the victim of being born, right? She gives birth to twin. Here we go, geminos, twin boys. So she, let me highlight this for you as we do it. And soon the woman gives birth to twin boys. So this is the adjective, just so you know, it modifies pueros. All right, patraus is part of your vocabulary and it is, it is in a nominative form. And then here we have, this is also given to you in your, in your uh, glossary. So the uncle of, this is the genitive form of Rhea Silvia. You haven't known genitive yet, so that's why they give it to you. And But we put it just in the nominative form in English. The uncle of Rhea Silvia. Here we go. You bet. If you look this up in your glossary orders. Who does he order? Let's look for an accusative ending. Servum. A servant. What does he order him to do? Ah. Ponere. They give this to you. To put or to place. So we'll do put. Put what? Here's our accusative. What's the victim of being put? Pueros. The boys. And then we have in room, which is in your glossary. Into a river. Of course, you can always put things like in, into, into the river. As long as your, your translation makes sense as you do it, it's okay to do it. All right. So, rivus. We we already know that that means river. That means river. The rivus, and then here we go again. We're going to stop right here because we come to a verb est. The river is, and then we've got this word, which is in your glossary. The river is deep, and then we've got another one. Et pueri. Et means and. Puera, you should know by now because you've looked at it a couple of times. This form, Puera is here. Puera is here. It's just a different form. It's a nominative form. And the boys. Ah, now we got. It's one of your first verbs that you learn. What do they do? It's plural. So the boys sail. And then interim. In terum, onto, and then terum you should know means land. All right, let's look at the next one. So, lupa, lupus means wolf, right here. Lupa, a wolf. So, servat, servat means guards. You could do any of these words. Guards, protects, takes care of, who? Liberos, right here, liberos. That's an accusative. Who does he get take care of? The children. You can see how watching the video beforehand gives you an idea of what the story is going to be. All right, tomb means tomb, right here, means then. Servus, we have servus again. Servus is nominative singular. Then a servant. Even though it's a shepherd or a herdsman, you don't know the word for that yet. So that's why they've simplified it to servant. What does he do? He spectat. You know this one. It can be to look at or to watch or to see. So we could say the servant watches the boys or he looks at the boys or he sees the boys. None of those changes the meaning of the sentence. So I'm just going to say sees. Who does he see? 
he sees the accusative here, accusative ending. He sees the boys. And then we have Annette. And so he sees, and we're looking for probably another verb. Here we go, portat, right here. What does he sees them? And he, what does he do? Carries. Who does he carry? He carries the boys. And then you are given this in your vocabulary, in your glossary, ad casam. Two. And we know because it's his house, his is implied here. His is, his is often implied. But you could say to his house or you could say to a house. We happen to know it's his. All right. So here we have. The nominative again, then of the servus, ah, et marita. So the servant, and again, we could say the servant and marita, it's in your glossary, it means wife, or we could say the servant and his wife, because that just makes better English sense, but neither of them is wrong. What do they do? So we've got the subject, now we need the verb. Oh, current. Right there, they give it to you in the glossary. It means to care. So the servant and his wife care. Ah, this is dative. Right here, pueros. Care for the boys. Actually, that's accusative. My apologies. That's accusative. But... In order for it to make sense, we're going to add the words for in there. Because otherwise, it would be care the boys. So we need to make it make good sense in English. So do what it takes to make it make good sense in English. You, you've been speaking English a long time, so trust yourself. Care for the boys. And then in casa, which they gave you in the house. Or you could say in their house. Neither of those would be wrong. All right. Next paragraph. So look how much you've translated already. Well done. All right. Next trend. Next one. Ubi. Ubi is in your glossary, and ubi is the word that means when. And pueri, you know already. You should recognize it by now. When the boys, and you know soon, because you've done it in other chapter readings, it simply means are. And then what are they? When the boys are men. When the boys are men. All right, so they've given you this as a whole, just in your, if you look down, it's not in the glossary, but it's close by. It's in bolded in your book too. They're just gonna give you, they wished to build. What do they wish to build? We're gonna look for something that has the accusative ending opi doom they wish to build a town all right so here we have romulus we got his name for the first time and it's in it's in the nominative form so it's in nominative form romulus what does he do oh we've got that word again here that we had here but not in the so, you know, what does Romulus do? Romulus builds and murum. That sounds like, you know what that word looks like? Mural. And where is a mural put? On a wall. So Romulus builds a wall. I'm going to skip down here. So here this is interesting so here we have nominative let's write this one nominative we know that's nominative we know that murum is accusative we know that monstrat with its ending is present third singular ah and monstrat is remember it's one of our verbs that takes the dative so here we have what could be a dative or an ablative but since you don't know ablative it's going to be dative so let's put it in order nominative first Romulus, what is it, monstrant, what does he do? Shows, what does he show? The accusative, the wall. 
who does he show the wall to? Who receives the showing of the wall? Our dative. And for Remo, Remus doesn't make sense, but certainly to Remus makes most sense. So Romulus shows the wall to Remus. And then we have Remus in his nominative form because it's got a U.S. on the end. So we know this is nominative and very short sentence. All right. And Remus, they give you this word, redet, laughs. I always remember it because it reminds me of, redet reminds me of the Riddler who's, you know, he would laugh a lot. Okay, so, so what happens? We have Romulus here in the, in the, in the nominative again. We have an est in the middle, which ends and you is, and you remember that whatever's on one side has to equal it's on the other. So these are actually both nominative singulars. The book gives you what Eratus is. So Romulus is and then eratus, angry, which it gives you in the book. All right, let's scoot down to this one. So here we have again, this is the nominative ending. Remum, it, his, remember his names are declined, and that's the accusative singular ending, of her, and then this is just singular, nekat. I always remember nekat because... It reminds me of kill across the neck, right? Slice somebody across the neck. So Romulus, so subject, and then verb, nekat, kills Remus. Endings are really important because we don't want to, Remus, Remus doesn't kill, don't change history on us. Remus does not kill Romulus. Romulus kills Remus. And then we have him again here in the nominative singular. So Romulus. Here we have the accusative ending and a really simple sentence, just three words. And now we've got the singular present tense. Romulus builds a town. Okay, and we've got Romulus again and we've got town again in the same. So those are easy. Those are still nominative singular and accusative singular and a pelot. All right, so we got Ramus builds a town. Ramus a pelot. You've got that in your vocabulary. So Romulus calls. What does he call? He accusative calls the town. Ah, this also is accusative. But Rome, by the way, is a Rome is a feminine Rome is a feminine noun. That's why the a m ending. Roman, Rom, 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 Romulus, of course, calls the town Rome. Okay. All right. So if you just were going to translate it straight, let me show you. Romulus, town, Rome. It's not Roman because anything will, that will be, if it was Roman... It would be Romanus. Anything that's Roman, speaking about the person, has an N in it. And Rome does not have an M in it. So, so I've had Romulus town, Rome calls. So you have to switch around the order and realize that Romulus calls the town Rome. You realize that you just have to, you have to play around with the word order sometimes to make it make sense. And that's, again, part of being a good translator. Okay. Nunc, nunc, you, I think you should know already, means now. Ah, again, here he is in his nominative form. Get used to looking for the patterns here. Nominative, and then we have est, which you already know, and then rex, which is in your glossary, and that's almo, also the form, and that is the nominative form here. So now, Romulus is king. There you go. That was painful, but it shouldn't have killed you. And that is the story of the birth and early life of Romulus and Remus.